Oh, you'd think that that was a beer. No, instead it is this TV static drink LaCroix. Hey guys, it's Olivia. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing a new series. It's gonna be called The Internet Made Me Read It. T working title in process. Uh, but basically I have lately been consuming much more like booktube, bookstagram, book talk, all of that content. And one book series that keeps coming up again and again is A Quarter Thones and Roses. Now in one of my most recent videos, you may have heard me talking about how this was in the mail. I've decided to kind of push this to the forefront so I can make a video about it. I will be reading this book, not the whole series, in this video and you will see my reactions as I read it and as thoughts pop into my head. Let's get started. So, I just finished the first chapter. I won't do a response for every chapter after this one. It'll just be when something happens in this book. So, I also realized I didn't read the synopsis, so y'all can know what I'm talking about. Uh, when 19-year-old Huntress Feyre, F-E-Y-R-E, Feyre, that's what I'm gonna call her, kills a wolf in the woods, a terrifying creature arrives to demand re retribution. Dragged to a treacherous magical land she knows o about only from legends, Fairy discover- Wow, I really can't read. It's been a very long time since I've read out loud. Fairy discovers that her captor is not only a beast, but one of the lethal immortal fairies who once ruled the world. At least- <clears throat> It's been a very long time since I've read out loud. At least he's not a beast all the time. As he adapts to, as she adapts to her new home, her feeling for the fairy Tamlin transform from icy hostility into a fiery passion that burns through every lie she's been told about the beautiful, dangerous world of the Fae. But something is not right in the fairy lands. An ancient, wicked shadow is growing, and Fairy must find a way to stop it, it or doom Tamlin and his world forever. So, that's the synopsis, which, in case you didn't know, I'm a really big fan of dark fantasy, not like dark fantasy novels, but they're not like epic fantasy. Like it's not, it's a world that usually exists within our own. This clearly is something very close to like a Game of Thrones where there's gonna be a lot of world building. Also, if you open up to the first page of the book, I will show you. Is this not Westeros? This looks pretty westeros -y to me. I have read the first two and a half books in that series, but that's a, video for another time so yeah i think it's gonna be interesting it sounds super appealing and as for the first chapter it is pretty much just how she kills the wolf but it does set up that she has two sisters and that they are going they've been going through some sort of hardship um like maybe poverty they don't have a lot of food it's winter for the past eight years so that's all i know so far the book hasn't said her name the synopsis has given us her name and her age it's basically that she has the choice between either kill a doe or kill the wolf that wants to kill her. And so she kills, she lets the wolf kill the doe and so she kills the wolf. She's a very clever hunter. That's what I've gathered so far. I don't know how this man's Tamlin is gonna play in. So we're gonna keep reading. But so we're told in the second chapter how to pronounce our main character's name. It is not Feyre as I thought it was. It's Feyre. I was very close. So I'm on chapter four and a fairy has just entered Feyre's home. And I just, the way that they're described in the book, I'm getting Beauty and the Beast vibes. Like, if you know me, you know that that's my favorite Disney movie. I love the story. But yeah, just the way that they describe the, like the grumbling tone, it's like an animalistic, like when Beast is screaming, get out at Belle after she goes into the West Wing. That's what I'm getting. And Feyre has that like stubborn pride that Belle has. So if this is the case, I'm very, very happy because I like, I love that story so much and this will just elevate it a tad bit. I was right in my guess that this story is a lot like Beauty and the Beast, the Disney version, um, not exactly. So if you guys remember the part in the Disney movie where Belle is attacked by a horde of wolves, Beast saved her and they form a friendship, yada, yada, yada. This is all happening in this book. I am about 15 chapters in on my first day of reading it, 136 pages. And I'm just like, this is Beauty and the Beast. Like down to the part where one of them can't read. 
I'm enjoying the crap out of this. I super enjoy the world and like all of the different type of fae. But yeah, it's Beauty and the Beast. And if you know me, like I said before, that's my favorite Disney movie. So I'm really enjoying this book. I love it. Let's see if things get even better. The beginning of chapter 17 with the fairy from the summer court. Ow. I'm crying in the club right now. <laughs> I'm so sad. Okay, I've been reading for about 12 hours. I think it's time to stop. It's about midnight. But um, yeah, I am about, according to the story graph, I'm about 43% done with the book. So I'm right in the middle. I'm at the point where it's like, okay, our two main characters clearly have a romance. Just make out already, please. But no, the author just has to build tension and make you be like, Jesus Christ. Um, but I'm also getting to like the plot is ramping up as well. That's a good thing. I think this is really well balanced with plot and romance because there are times when it's like, when romance novels, it's just like, like an issue I kind of have with Twilight or can have with Twilight is that it's all romance, 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 love triangle. And this one, there's an equal, there's enough world building and uh, interesting plot lines and fantasy elements to actually make an interesting plot story for like the shadow that's looming over, what is it called? It's like pre -anth print. what is it called? I should know this. I've read it 500 times in the... How come no one told me about the end of chapter 21? I knew it was a romance, but like, um, 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 try not to use the word steamy and sound like a grandma, but dang. 25 chapters, 229 pages. It takes for them to kiss. Finally, finally. You know, you know the prologue. You warned her not to be blah blah by appearances, blah blah blah. You have to find a human with ice in her heart that hates her kind. Oh my god! I love this book. For the record, I already purchased book two. I am stressed right now. I'm at the part where Ryzen. Hi, editing Olivia here. I'm just now learning that uh, <laughs> the character I'm referring to as Rysand or Rise is actually pronounced Resand or Reese. So I'm gonna say it wrong about a billion times in this video, apologies. Uh, that's what happens when you read something and you don't hear it audibly and you just kind of go off memory, but yeah. It's Resand or Reese. And also when I say Lucian, I mean, uh, where's the pronunciation? It's Lucian. Okay, so I was close. I digress. I apologize for my mispronunciations. Came to her cell. And it's like, I'll fix your arm if I can have you for two weeks. And I'm just like, excuse you. Excuse you, you piece of junk. I sense a love triangle and I am not happy about it. I hate love triangles. I hate them. They drive me insane. Okay, if you've made it this far into the video, that means that you have witnessed me essentially fangirl about this book. Let me give you my final thoughts. I, in fact, would like to live in the spring court, and here's why. Contrary to the fact that I am a basic gal, um, spring is actually my favorite season, not fall. So if I could live in a land where it is just warm springtime all the time, that would make me the happiest person on the planet. And ergo, I love Tamlin for that reason. Like, I would live there with Tamlin. That, that's, that's the first and foremost final thought. It's very important to me that this is established that I love spring. But besides the fangirly part, let's actually talk about the book itself and the writing and the pacing and if I liked the characters and all that fun stuff. So let's talk about the pacing. For me, this was a page turner. I think I haven't read this fast since I was 14 years old. And if you follow me on my bookstagram, you know I finished it in about two days. Like the first day, I think I read 182 pages, which is insane. I will say, however, like I might be an average paced reader and because the font size on this is really 
isn't like massive but it's definitely decent sized enough to where you're like oh that's a pretty big font but it contributes to that but I definitely think that the pacing was really fast a lot of people have said that the middle was where things came to a grinding halt. I felt like my interest in things, I, like during her trials, I think that the pacing slowed down, just, especially in between. Like I got through like the actual trials really fast, but I like didn't care what was happening in between or I was incredibly frustrated by what was happening in between each trial with Ryzen. I've been seeing things on the internet that people are like, you think you like Tamlin, but you actually like Ryzen. And I'm like, I actually don't, I don't want to punch him in the face. I think he's sneaky. I'm not into the emo boy anymore. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Like, I'm over it. I talked a little bit about how, like, I like the characters a lot. While I am frustrated by Ryzen, I like that she wrote in a character arc for him. Like, towards the end, I was like, huh. Definitely didn't, like, expect him to actually be likable. Like, I, I, like, my favorite romance book up until now was Twilight. Um, and I have Anytime I've read that, I've been so frustrated by certain characters. Like, Jacob, to me, has no character arc. He just kind of was annoying the entire time, and that's how I felt Ryzen was going to be. But no, he's actually not. He's sneaky, but I don't actually find him annoying. I think he's incredibly clever. So I think that's a really good character arc that she wrote in. But when Nesta started to get a character arc, I was like, oh, she decided this was going to be a series versus a standalone. Although I will say it definitely works as a standalone. I'm definitely curious about what happens next, but if someone was like, oh yeah, it's a standalone, I'd be like, that is a super satisfying story. So A plus Sarah J Mass. My actual favorite character might might be Lucian. I thought he was his banter with Feyre is really good. I loved him so much. He seemed fun. Like, I would want to be friends with Lucian. I thought he was chill. And of course, I loved Tam Tamlin. I always find myself falling in love with the main character's love interest even if I don't like the main character. And I'm not saying I didn't like Feyre, I just didn't quite relate to Feyre as much as I would relate to like what this story is based on, which is very clearly Beauty and the Beast. Now that I've done some quick googling, it is obvious that it is Beauty and the Beast and it's said time and time again. I relate more to Disney's Belle mainly on the level of like the reading and the love of libraries, but also I find that Belle was a little less headstrong and like used a lot. Not that Favor was dumb because she's certainly not and not being able to read due to X, Y, and Z reason does not equate dumb. I found that when things were like, hey, this is kind of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't do that. And she was like, I'm going to go out into the forest on this bonfire night anyway. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I mean, it led to a very spicy scene, which is fine, but I was like, I was like, wait, they literally said don't do that, not until morning, it's one night, it's not gonna kill you to sit your butt down, and she didn't. But I guess if she was a little less headstrong and didn't do things like that, we wouldn't have a plot, which is fine. Also, the villain, Amarantha, she reminded me of Queen Beryl from Sailor Moon, uh, just in the way that she's just so twist and evil and she's very, she's jealous of Feyre with Tamlin and that reminded me of how Queen Beryl is in love with Tuxedo Mask and jealous of the fact that Tuxedo Mask is in love with Sailor Moon. It gave me that kind of vibe and I really, really like that story and I really like that dynamic. I thought that having a clever, really cunning villain like really worked for this story because there are so many witty characters she was cruel for a reason which you would think would humanize her or like make her like have sympathy for her and you're just like um no you literally have someone's eyeball in a ring on your hand and you're like guess what you gotta watch the torture i inflict on everyone else so i thought that that was really like, she's just a good villain. But yeah, overall, I did really, really enjoy it. I just have to use my critical brain to talk about things. I just thought it was an interesting book. Ten of, like, uh, how many times can I say? I liked it. It was five stars. You've heard enough out of my mouth. So thank you for watching. Please follow me on Instagram. If you like bookish stuff, it's at Liv's Lovely Library. If you're just kind of, like, into normal stuff, please follow me at Olivia is Awkward. Both links are in the description. And of course, of course, if you enjoyed watching this video and you think you would like to see my next few, please click that subscribe button. 
Uh, also leave me a comment telling me book recommendations. If you like the series, please do not spoil it for me. Please. I really just want to live a spoiler-free life. But yeah, subscribe. New video every Tuesday at 2.30pm, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!